The Natural Disasters DLC is obviously a game-changing expansion for City Skylines. So I want to go over all the new buildings and some of the new policies to help you keep your city from destruction. Now briefly, let's touch upon probably the most popular thing in this expansion, and that is manual disasters. So if you want a specific disaster to occur in a specific part of your city, uh, you can go into the Landscaping and Disasters tab, and you'll find them all here on the right-hand side. Uh, something to keep in mind, and not to overlook, is that naturally dis these disasters, I think, default are at 5, but you can move this scale up and down. You can make these, you know, like, a, for instance, a tornado... A, on, a, on a scale of like a level 10 tornado is going to be much more devastating than, uh, you know, the default 5. So uh, something else to kind of play around with. Anyways, so uh, let's go over probably the most important new thing to this DLC. And that is uh, under the, uh, formerly it was like kind of the fire tab before. Now it's the emergency services tab. This is uh, going to be probably the most important new thing. So we have the disaster response unit. So this is a building that is, uh, is, is going to be both trucks and helicopters. Helicopters being also another very big new addition to City Skylines. So what this guy's going to do is he's, he's going to go around rebuilding things. Um, so there's 10 trucks and 3 helicopters at most that you can use. And when a disaster occurs, you're going to see a lot of collapse. A lot of your structures in your cities are going to collapse. These guys are going to go out there and they're going to rebuild them. Now you can always just manually bulldoze those buildings and they can come up, but when it comes to like special services, you know, your medical clinic or your police station, those all can collapse too. And what these guys are going to go do is after disaster is over, it's going to go, it's going to rebuild those things, and then there's going to be a button to uh, just rebuild. That way you don't have to waste a bunch of money putting down that $60,000 hospital or, you know, whatever, $75,000 firehouse. So uh, these are very, very important. You're going to want a lot of these. If you have a town like, you know, or a city like mine with over 100,000 population, you definitely, most definitely want a lot of these things. The second most important thing, actually, this is probably the most important thing now that I think about it, the two emergency shelters. So a large emergency shelter houses 10,000 people and uh, a small one houses only 1,000. Uh, keep in mind, this is $24,000. This is only 74000 So these smaller shelters a lot more useful in like smaller districts like this so you know it's like a kind of a small district that I built inside of this mountain range uh, if I were to put this sucker down you know you can require only the people in this district to go to that small emergency shelter and I'll go over the policies because that's also something that is kind of being overlooked are the new policies in this expansion so really quick after you put down the uh, the shelter whether it's you know a big one or a small one we uh, will see kind of the these values start to rise up so you can't just put something down like last second if you're seeing like a big disaster uh you know unfold before your eyes you, you got to make sure you kind of have this prepared you, that's why they have these uh this kind of in place where you need it to slowly have enough power food and water or else you're going to have a bunch of people inside of the shelter and they're going to run out of food or water and then more people are going to die and uh that's that's not good so you know kind of keep in mind start placing them down before all the all the you know what hits the fan uh, after you place it down though you got to create evacuation routes so um, I think something to keep in mind just like my own personal tip is that the longer the longer the route is the longer it's going to take those buses because buses are gonna go around picking people up so uh, the more the longer it is and the more stops you take might mean you might need to have you know at least a good minute or, or so knowledge of like when you press evacuate all citizens uh, and get them inside because if I were to go like all the way around I'm just put if I'm just putting like a bunch of stops down that that's gonna take a while for those buses to get uh, I just kind of messed that up but it's gonna take a while for those buses to get back towards here so um, obviously the sooner you know when a disaster is going to hit uh, the better because then you can start evacuating people earlier and uh, the earlier you know the more people you can save obviously so um so that's just kind of, kind of something to keep in mind when it comes to the emergency shelters now there's two radio masts one being 25,000 that's the big one the tall one the short one being only 10,000 
Uh, a short radio mast allows emergency broadcasts to reach your citizens. The better radio coverage the city has, the more likely citizens are to come to the shelters when called. So yeah, I mean, just saying, you know, because we have like a little button up here, by the way. So if I have like a bunch of emergency shelters, you can activate all of them at the same time. You don't have to manually do it, which is something that I was doing way too much of the first few times I was playing through this expansion. So yeah, I can hit this button and uh, right now I only have one place down, but you know, you'll see like, oh yeah, everyone across the city will start going. Well, at least they'll know the buses will start to to launch out of uh, those shelters and pick people up. But not everybody inside of the city knows what's going on. So that makes this kind of crucial. So if I were to put one of these guys down, and you got to keep in mind coverage. So obviously the, the shorter ones will not have as much coverage as uh, a much larger one. So putting one down, I mean, I could probably fit because this is a, a, a city that I had built that uh, was meant to be kind of really dense, but it kind of works. So if I were to place this like right here on the mountain range, I can get a good amount of people. So, you know, maybe like, I don't know, right there. I can get a, a, a pretty good amount. And there we go. We're going to see some happiness. So this allows for more people to know like, oh crap, there is a massive tsunami coming. I need to get inside the shelter. Now the next few buildings are mostly going to be um, buildings like warnings and, and emergency sort of, I don't even know what they're called, sensors and things like that. Because as I said before, the earlier you can know, you know, the earlier you know a disaster is going to hit, the better. That way you can hit that, you know, like evacuate all button faster. More people know they have to get to the emergency shelter because people could be at work. People could be, I don't know, walking their dog. Who knows what they're doing? So you got to you got to know as soon as possible. So earthquake sensor is going to do exactly that. It's going to let you know, uh, gives you like a warning, you know, seismic activities occurring uh, below the ground. So you can like start to get people into the emergency shelter. We've got a tsunami Warning buoy, a weather radar to kind of watch out for the storms and the tornadoes that could be coming up. A deep space radar because those meteors are pretty impactful. Whether, you know, a meteor lands like in the heart of your city or out in the ocean, that meteor could cause a tsunami. So, uh, you know, this kind of helps you avoid two at once, just like the weather radar does. Now let's talk about a few buildings that will surely get overlooked. The tank reservoir, which allows you to pump excess water into these reservoirs. That way, you know, if emergency goes down, your water pipelines go down, at least you have these guys to kind of help you out. And that, that really is going to be useful when you have like a situation as I do, where I only really have one area of my city that is uh, pumping a bunch of water to everywhere else. So if I have like a tank reservoir over here, I don't need to be worried about like if an earthquake occurs and, you know, this pipeline breaks because that, that is a possibility. Uh, next up, we have a pumping station, or pumping service, I should say. The pumping service has a fleet of uh, vacuum trucks that are sent out when there is a when there are flooded buildings in the city. Uh, this can be useful on multiple scenarios if you're you know kind of playing the disaster, the new uh, City Skyline scenarios, which is also really, really fun, by the way. Got to check that out. But if I'm seeing a lot of flooding just due to, maybe not even due to a tsunami, these guys can help. These guys can help kind of slow down the flooding and uh, the collected water is released into the sewer system at the pumping service depot. Finally, we've got a freshwater outlet. This is also new, uh, lets out any excess water produced by the city. Uh, it can be freely placed on dry land, allowing the creation of lakes and ponds. That That is, I know a lot of people are gonna really enjoy that. Uh, that's, I, I'm, I'm very excited for that because just more creativity control. If you're not really into the whole disaster thing, uh, kind of get a little bit more control without having to game game the game I guess game the game yeah now as I said earlier the helicopters are a big part of this DLC uh, one of them being the medical helicopter depot so the medical hel helicopter depot which I have placed down right here sends out helicopters to pick up patients and take them to hospitals that have landing pads got to make sure they have landing pads that's kind of crucial. Helicopters can reach locations with no roads access and help avoid traffic jams. So that's the thing, is when these disasters occur and when you have people evacuating to emergency shelters, it's kind of chaos. Especially, you know, with, you know, like natural, just the natural flow of a city. Like, I've got this, like, huge traffic jam on this bridge right here. Who knows what, what's, what roads are going to be destroyed due to what disasters or anything like that. If you have these helicopter pads or at least these medical helicopters, you don't need to worry about it anymore. You don't have to, infrastructure won't be as important when it comes to like getting sick citizens, which you're going to get a lot of sick citizens due to all sorts of different pollution and things like that due to these disasters. Uh, so yeah, the, they can just totally, you can just totally bypass the, uh, all of, all of the, 
what's it called? All the all the the trafficy roads and the jam the jam traffic the, the gridlock traffic is what I'm trying to say, and uh, and and that's that's good. Um, that's another part of uh, the new emergency tab is. Here it is, Fire Helicopter Depot. This is pretty important, especially when it comes to forest fires. As you can see, you can see it right here. Um, because traditional firehouses or or uh, fire departments, they can't reach out here. They, they're, they, they're restricted to the roads. So if I have like this little guy here, then we can, now we don't have to stress as much about the forest fires because they will occur. And the forest fires can get close enough to buildings to set them on fire, and then it's just a huge chaotic mess. Your fire trucks will only be putting out the, putting out the building; they won't be putting out the source of the fire, which will be someplace up here. And it's just you know it can be a huge mess. Uh, that's another thing for the fire watchtower. We can also put one of these suckers down just to get notified a little bit sooner, because I guarantee you, just like me, maybe maybe it's just me, but I miss a lot of these forest fires because I'm just not paying attention. Boom! All of a sudden, there's a huge forest fire. And in a map like this, it's not as devastating. Like maybe, maybe over here would be much more. Uh, I had kind of gotten rid of my forests in this city. But uh, if you're on a map that has tons of forests, yeah, that's got to be a big worry of yours. And finally, the police helicopter depot is the final new helicopter building thingy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, again, it helps you bypass any sort of traffic jams or infrastructure uh, destruction you might be dealing with due to these disasters. So these are all very helpful. So let's go over a few of the new policies. We've got one in the services tab and I think four in the city planning. So helicopter priority, as we went over, there's tons of new helicopter buildings. So if you have a lot of those structures placed down and you know that your roads and, and your bridges are constantly being destroyed by disasters, this is a really, really good idea. Or if you just have like massive traffic issues, uh, it's also kind of a great way to kind of avoid, make sure that you've got police copters, police helicopters and, and medical and fire copters copters choppers there you go choppers and uh and that that's good however keep in mind that if you you have helicopter priority on and let's say there's a fire your fire department is less likely i i saw firsthand uh my fire department not do anything while there was a fire right next to their their building their structure they were allowing the helicopters to go after it and get it so just something to kind of keep in mind, especially if something's going on, if something's wrong with your helicopter building, uh, that could be a problem. So just kind of watch out for that. Uh, lightning rod. I think that this is kind of straightforward. You can enact this city planning policy to help help stop some of the fires that uh, lightning storms create. So I think that uh, it's a pretty good idea, especially especially in a district like this where there's tons of very, very tall buildings and it's very prone to... Uh, lightning strikes and fires. VIP area, as I said earlier, uh, this is a policy that I can enact in a certain district where maybe we don't want people outside of the district coming into our emergency zone or emergency um, rescue thingy. Well, you know what I'm trying to Shelter is what I'm trying to say. Uh, maybe you don't care about anybody else in the city. You're, maybe you're like, no, 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 don't come over here. We don't want you there. Uh, this is a good policy if you were, I guess, evil like me in that sense. Yeah, so it's it's only going, it's going to be reserved for only the citizens living in the policy area. Pretty cool. Fast recovery. Uh, in these areas, the emergency response unit does not search for the survivors, but only makes the lot ready for rebuilding. Um, more citizens are lost, but the city recovers faster. So if you are, if you have enough of those like emergency buildings, like the buoys down or the the satellite meteor, you know, or the or the weather system, if you have enough time to get people into the uh, emergency shelter faster, this might be a good idea. If you know, okay, more than likely most of my citizens will be safe. Let's focus on rebuilding all the collapsed buildings. So it's kind of a policy, definitely to consider. And then this is kind of the reverse of that. Forbid rebuilding on lots with destroyed buildings. Lots have to be manually bulldozed to allow rebuilding. Uh, again, I know that a popular mod is the uh, the automatic bulldoze mod. That might not be a good idea because, as I said, buildings that you actually need might be collapsing like the dump or the fire department or the police station or your, your bus depot. Everything could collapse. So uh, kind of watch out for that mod. And... Uh, I, I'm trying to think when this would be a good idea. Lots have to be manually bulldozed to allow rebuilding. I guess if you know a certain district that got wiped out didn't have any important buildings inside of it, maybe, maybe that's something. Uh, but anyways, that is uh, that is about it for the expansion. Again, there are like 
five or six new scenarios as well, which are really, really fun. Got to try those out. But uh, I hope this helped you out in, in showing some of the new features. Obviously, there are a ton of new buildings and policies and strategies to play with when it comes to avoiding complete city destruction. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.